Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument near the town of Salisbury, England. If you haven't heard of Stonehenge before, then it's essentially a ring of rocks, each one standing some 4 meters high and 2 meters wide. Some rocks lay on top of others, creating a gateway impression, and others stand solitary. Thought to have been constructed in the last years of the Stone Age or the Early Bronze Age, Stonehenge is full of mysteries. Researchers are fairly sure that they figured out how Stonehenge was built, but their theories aren't set in stone. The incredible monument poses more unanswered questions than answered ones, and new theories and discoveries emerge every day. Yet Stonehenge continues to baffle researchers, scientists, historians, and archaeologists, and there's one question that enthusiasts still can't find a definitive answer to. Why was Stonehenge actually built? Well, there are numerous theories about that, but that question probably isn't going to be answered for some time. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three more recent Stonehenge discoveries. The Discovery of Previously Unseen Stonehenge Carvings Prehistoric cave painting is well known to be one of the earliest forms of art seen on Earth. Before language existed, let alone the ability to write, read or speak in the way we can today, man would tell stories through drawings. These paintings have been popularized in film, comics, literature and more. They've inspired modern storytelling as well as various fables and mythology over the centuries. Stonehenge, however, wasn't believed to have such extensive carvings, which, if researchers have got the purpose for its construction right, was a bit strange. But we live in the 21st century, and luckily the beauty of laser technology exists. People were reporting that they could make out carvings on the surface of some of Stonehenge's stones as early as the 1950s. However, these claims were often disputed as, well, the carvings were so hard to see that they could hardly be categorized as intentional drawings. In 2003, however, a group of scientists took to the stones with laser technology. The quality of the photos was naturally much better than the grainy photos from nearly 50 years earlier, and even though the stones had undergone a fair amount of natural erosion, scientists could clearly make out some carvings. Further studies of the images did not only show what the carvings were meant to be, but even provided some answers to the question of why Stonehenge was built. The prehistoric carvings seemed to be of axe heads, axes themselves, and even daggers. These may seem a little violent, but it was common for drawings of weapons, amongst other things, to be carved on the walls of burial chambers or religious grounds. Burial sites all over the UK display carvings such as these, but the commemoration of the deceased isn't the only theory that the carvings support. Some researchers believe that Stonehenge was designed to line up with the summer solstice, thus acting as a rather large calendar. These carvings may have pointed out specific dates, but this theory, to this day, is far from being proven. Where did Stonehenge's stones come from? 2020 is a year that everybody will probably want to forget rather quickly. However, for geographers, natural scientists and archaeologists, the various lockdowns have allowed research to be undertaken at various spots of natural beauty around the world, without the hordes of visiting tourists getting in the way. In July 2020, new technology solved one of Stonehenge's biggest mysteries. People have wondered how and why Stonehenge was built for decades but also questioned where stones of the size present at Stonehenge came from. The largest stones are known to be Saracen stones. Whilst the smaller rocks, scattered on the ground that make up part of the inner ring, are called blue stones. The Saracen stones are so huge that they are nearly the size of a double-decker bus. So, where do you find stones this big? They don't just lie around in forests or in parks, so how did the monument's prehistoric creators come across them? Well, the location is not particularly spectacular. The Saracen stones used at Stonehenge hail from the West Woods in the county of Wiltshire. West Woods is just outside the small town of Marlborough, but 15 miles from Stonehenge itself. The hunter-gatherers of the period that Stonehenge was built, some 5,000 years ago, 
would have had to transport the stones, each one weighing nearly 25 tons, from Westwoods down to Salisbury. Some researchers think that the stones were moved by natural glacier movement, but others believe transportation was a human effort. They could have been transported by water in an early form of barge transport, but it's likely they were simply hauled over the land. Now, you might wonder how scientists found out the true origin of the stones. It was almost accidental, in fact. In 1958, a man had taken a small amount of rock from Stonehenge home as a souvenir something which is not permitted, but decided to hand it back to Stonehenge researchers this year. The scientists then took samples of the rock and managed to create a stone fingerprint as they had described it. They did similar things with some 20 Saracen stones from across England and compared the stone's chemical makeup. A match was eventually found, pointing straight to West Woods. Researchers were very shocked at finding the source of the stone and didn't think they would have found such a precise location. However, this is a 5,000-year-old monument, and mysteries aren't just solved like that. Two of the stones didn't match the Westwood's discovery. How and why they are a different type of Saracen rock, we don't exactly know. The Tunnel Beneath Stonehenge Between half a million and a million people visit Stonehenge each year. Naturally, this means that the road that passes by the monument has a lot of traffic on it, all year round. For some time, controversial plans to build a tunnel under the Stonehenge Heritage Site has been proposed. As you can probably imagine, archaeologists, enthusiasts, historians, scientists and even religious people are not particularly happy with this. It's not entirely known for sure what is under the historic monument and in the surrounding grounds, and people are worried that prehistoric, potentially valuable items of cultural importance may be accidentally damaged or discarded as the tunnel site is excavated. In fact, the official report on the project admitted that there would be substantial harm to cultural heritage, landscape and a visual impact around Stonehenge. However, the last point made in the statement has caused controversy itself. The road nearby obviously causes a lot of noise and is somewhat a stain on undulating green hills that surround Stonehenge. The proposed tunnel would remove much of this visual pollution simply by putting the road underground. The proposal is a toss-up between potential harm to the grounds of a 5,000-year-old monument and reducing the eyesore that is the road close by. Similarly, the closure of the current road would allow for more hiking routes in the surrounding countryside people would be able to approach Stonehenge from more directions without having to cross a busy road. Both the National Trust and English Heritage have praised the plans, which was all the approval that the government really needed to get. Yet others are still not pleased, and it's rumoured that protesters will even fly in from abroad to make a stand at Stonehenge. Highways England have assured those concerned that the landscape will be restored to its original shape after the works are completed. But is it really going to be possible to do this? Over 50 proposals have been put forward in the last few decades to construct such a tunnel, and there may have been a consistent reason why they have not been allowed to proceed. The proposed tunnel will run about 130 feet below the surface, which is well below any archaeological layers. However, the approach and entrance to the tunnel will cut through topsoil which could contain valuables and artefacts. Stonehenge is a historic site, and many believe that it should stay that way. After all, in an age when we're supposed to be reducing car travel and reducing carbon emissions, why are we making it easier to do so? Monuments such as Stonehenge are rare, and nothing we build today will reach Stonehenge's level of history for thousands of years, and it's important to remember that. But what do you make of these Stonehenge discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.